She's here. I am so excited. <gasps> she is such a fucking icon. I love I you so much. I the, like, don't mess my hair up in my convertible. No, it's giving Jack. you got to have the clips. you got to have this. It, it's, it's a whole thing. Funny, because I used to think they just did this to be cute. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, no. It, it's, it's to help my hair. It's to help your hair. Yeah. I'm like, that's brilliant. You're just... I can't. I have no. I'm I have so nothing excited. to say. Uh, we have the new cranberry fizz coffee. I like haven't eaten anything, and I have a Milani, so I'm like, oh, what are you ready snack. to like? Do you have a my I red wig it. from last night. It's this is just what our house of chaos. So we're gonna stick with Poppy today. <gasps> Wait, I'm already lost. I'll follow oh. you. <laughs> Stop. Hey, this is be so good. Are you ready? Yes. I'm honored. I'm the queen. queen. Is in the podcast show, you guys. Cheers, I love you. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Cheers. I'm your host, Avery Woods, and I have a very special guest. I'm so excited. I, like, 15, age 15 through age 20, Avery is freaking out right now because you are such an icon. You're so nice. I have Miss Amber Filler up in my podcast chair right now and if I could go back and my high school self saw what's happening she would be freaking out I need to see like a picture of 15 year old Avery oh no you don't after this mm. yeah we're, we're gonna find one. okay maybe. I need to like paint the whole picture okay and like yeah I, need I to had see baby Avery. I had really white teeth because you taught me how to wipe my teeth mm-hmm. with, with a banana peel yeah we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll give them a rundown after but this is Amber filler up and I, she's just like the OG influencer in my eyes, like especially of our time, you are just such an icon and I am so proud that I can call you a friend and that you're on my podcast. Same. So thank you for Same. being here. No, I was telling my following, but like, I remember when I met Avery and she was talking about starting a podcast and I was like, duh, like you have to, like for some people it just makes sense. And I was like, I freaking can't wait for this. So I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. Let's do, well, first of all, let's cheers. Yes, we got to cheers. It's a little early in the morning, so we were drinking a poppy today. I already popped an Alani and I'm like hopped up. Yeah, she's shaken. I made her eat a little snack in the kitchen. (laughs) Did you eat some more? Did you hear my little little gargle? It's cute. So, Amber. Let's give a quick rundown for those that don't know. How would you describe yourself? How would I describe myself? Well, I started influencing content creating like 13 years ago. Crazy. So crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, when Avery was 15. <laughs> and um, anyway, I have four kids, husband, two businesses. I just, you know, love life. Yeah, and you, this era of Amber is just like, I mean, I am living for, I've been obsessed with you forever, but like everyone else is in such awe of you because I feel like you've truly come into yourself. Like you can just, like you radiate confidence and just like a powerful, badass boss bitch. And I just love that. And I think that's why for so long you've inspired me because you're always just like on to the next better thing. And it's always something that you're even more passionate about, which I love. And I think that's why you're so successful because you truly love everything you do and you give 110%. Yeah. I mean, like it is hard because a lot of people miss, they'll be like, I miss the OG Ambi and whatever. And I mean, sometimes I do too, just because it's fun to look back on like all the memories and all the stages of life have been so fun. But at the same time, I'm like, I've grown so much since then. So mm-hmm. I'm like, she unfortunately is gone. Love her for where R. she R. got P. us. Yeah. But <laughs> like, I am just so different now. So it's fun. But like, it's also kind of hard when people like have the, they're like, I miss the old you, yeah. you know. Well, and I feel like naturally everyone just evolves. And that's why I really dislike when people will be like, oh, Avery, you're so different now. Or I see people that will comment other influencers like, you're so different now, I miss the old you. Everyone evolves. Everyone grows and changes. And I am a different person. 
that doesn't mean that since my career shifted or I make more money or I post different content, that doesn't mean internally I'm a bad person now. I think it's just people, when you show your life on the internet for the world, they watch you evolve and grow and they automatically think that they have the right to say that opinion. But like, what an honor that they've been able to watch you grow and evolve into who you are today. Yeah. And well, I was just on Tumblr last night and read this thing that was like, the best kind of friend is one that welcomes growth, even if it means you guys are going to grow apart. And like with the following, especially like, yeah, there's times where like I'll grow apart from certain followers, like my new trajectory maybe isn't for them. But, like, going back to that, I think, like, the mature thing is, like, being happy for someone's growth and then, like, maybe unfollowing. Yeah, for sure. Whatever. Yeah. How did you, actually, don't even really know this story, but how did you get into influencing? I've always loved taking photos. And I just, I don't even know what made me start a blog. I just wanted to share my photos um, with my family for this trip I was taking to Fiji for Mm -hmm. six weeks. Um, so I think I had initially started it just for that, posted pictures from Fiji while I was gone. And then when I got back, it was like just a journal. It was, I would share Tumblr pictures. I've been a Tumblr girly forever. Oh yeah, you're like the OG Tumblr girly in my eyes. Yes. Oh, I love Tumblr. I started a blog because I was going to Fiji and wanted to share my photos with my family while I was gone. Um, and then when I got back, I would just use it like a journal, like post about dating stories. I wasn't married yet. So Mm -hmm. I was just dating and would share Tumblr posts, random thoughts, just like anything. And it kind of just naturally happened because people, when I would share pictures, would be like, how did you do your hair? And then I would hop on my little photo booth on my laptop in my dimly lit dorm room whatever you call it the worst grainy quality of all so bad like Mm -hmm. literally green it was so yellow that it was green and anyway I would film on there and then people would ask where I got clothes so I would start linking clothes so it kind of just all snowballed very naturally Mm -hmm. so you went from tumblr and then what was next instagram or youtube no then it was my blog instagram hadn't even come out yet oh yeah So then I think Instagram came out after I had been doing my blog for about a year and David actually was the one I started dating him and he started to get Instagram followers. He's like, you should download it. I'm like, I bet I can get more than you in like a day. I'm (laughs) done. And like just being annoying. Um, But then I downloaded it and yeah, I think so Instagram next or no, YouTube came before Instagram. So it went blog, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and that's it. Were you were you in college at this time? Yeah. Well, college dropout. Hey, um, look at you now, girl. But I was in hair school. Okay. Yeah. And then how old were you when you met David? I think I was like 19 or 20. So tell me about that. I want to hear how you guys met. I know. So we met at the gym. Okay. And he always thought I smelled good, which I did. I thought you were Because I bad. knew he was going to be there. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, though. If you know, you know. But, um, no, I knew he was going to be there. So, obviously, I would do, like, tanning lotion, all the smelly lotion, pink sugar perfume. Oh, yeah. Iconic. <laughs> I smelled like a sugar cookie. Yeah. Um, And so I'd go to the gym and he didn't ever talk to me. So I am pretty sure I found him, like did detective work and found him and added him. And then he messaged me and I think I made up some BS reason that I added him. I'm like, oh my gosh, I saw a group photo and recognized you when I'm like, I can't tell him how I actually found him. Like I'm actually obsessed with you. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Anyway, so then he messaged me. And it's so cute. I still have all these messages and they're so sweet. I love that. I know. So then we got together, but he didn't want to be like the douchey guy who comes and hits on me at the gym. So he wasn't coming to talk to me. And then I'm like too shy. So yeah. Anyway, we finally connected. And what was he doing then? He was at BYU. He was kind of just taking his time. Like he's he did eventually graduate but it took him a while because he was just like he's super talented he's Mm -hmm. good at everything somehow so he was in 
multiple bands. He plays the drums and bass and can sing and like do all these things. Um, so I think he was just like having fun, did different jobs, finished schooling. Yeah. Doing his thing. Did you finish hair school? Yeah. And then did you ever work as a stylist or was this when you were like social media is picking up? I can do this full time. I worked as a stylist for a little bit and it was nice because I got most of my clients through my blog. Oh, yeah. Um, But then, yeah, my blog and Instagram and everything was just taking off. So I had to stop. Mm -hmm. But I was a stylist for like a year and loved it. When was the point that you were like, I could do social media as my career? Well, I never really thought it would be like a full blown career. I've always thought every year is my last year. Like, I'm pretty sure I go into every single year still being like, this is my last year. This is just fun. Not going to do it next year. Well, it's never guaranteed. It's never guaranteed. So I never want to think it is. And I don't plan my life as if it is ever. Um, So, yeah, I never really thought it was going to be my career. But when David dropped out of law school... We didn't do it as like, we sort of did it as you can always go back to law school, but like, this is just fun and we're young and we only have one kid. Let's just go for it. So we kind of just, yeah, went for it. How soon after dating David, did you guys get married? We dated for, I think six months and then I, is it called DTR? I DTR'd him. What is that? To find the relationship. I was like, am I your girlfriend or not? I've like, heard of DTF and not DTR. <laughs> wait, am I combining the two? To find the really, I mean, that could be. I don't thing. know. Anyway, I haven't been single in a long time. But um, anyway, I sat him down and was like, am I your girlfriend or not? Like, I'm moving on if I'm not. And he was like, said I'm not. So I was like, okay, peace. And Oh, then, wait, he said, no, you're not my girlfriend? Yeah. <gasps> I didn't know that. I know. David. (laughs) David. David. So moved on and went and made out with one of his now favorite football players. I'm (laughs) done with you. I was very strategic after that. Yeah, I'm It's like all the games. It's so stupid. Yeah, girls are psycho. It's okay. But I'm good at those. So anyway, (laughs) did all of that. And then anyway, he came back and we got together and the rest is history I guess and was this in Utah that you guys started dating yeah and then in Provo you guys got married how soon after did you get pregnant with Addie soon really we got married in December and then we went on a trip in I think August of the next year so not even a year and we were like in Italy like let's maybe have a baby like if it happens this time then it's meant to be and if not we'll try again in like six months and then I got pregnant and yeah so not even a year after how is how old is Addy 10 he's nine nine yeah that's crazy I I remember when you well first of all going back to you guys getting married my entire um wedding inspo pinterest board was you oh my gosh i still love my wedding and i when i got married when i went to go look at wedding dresses all i wanted was a long sleeve dress and i would show your dress funny oh my gosh i loved my dress with your flower crown still honestly that's still my style today and it's it was very true to my style and it's funny because you would look at it in the moment and be like maybe that's a little boho or my age it is still so iconic. Like, it's timeless. I love it. I know. So many people, like, copied it, like, to a T. Which, honestly, I didn't care. And, like, yeah. it's so cute. Like, I, you know, you're an influencer for a reason. But, like, I just still love it. Obviously, we had such a small budget. Like, we spray painted all the centerpieces, got them all from DI, made our cake topper ourselves. And Aww. we were on a very, very small budget. Yeah. So, I think I could have made my vision come to life more now but I think it's still like we plan to do a full-blown wedding eventually now that we've changed so much and we never did vows in the first place Mm -hmm. we got married in the temple yeah and we're no longer Mormon so we're gonna do like I still just in my head I'm like I just want to like walk down the aisle like I want my dad to walk me down the aisle like it like makes me want to cry even thinking about it so I'm like I just need that to happen so we're we're still planning that, which we probably won't do it for a couple of years because 
it went from like we'll do a small vow renewal to like no I want like a full-blown wedding <laughs> we're doing that in um, 2026 for our 10 year because oh my gosh, we got married so in a special for 75 dollars like we had no money we were so poor and now like you have your kids your kids yes. can go yes. and it's so special I think we're gonna do it in Italy Oh my god! I, I just like I'm like we deserve that moment. Yeah, you know what I mean. And especially, you guys know like when you've been married for so long, you deserve to celebrate that because it is so rare nowadays. You know, and what yeah. a beautiful thing to celebrate as a family. I know. I'll yeah. invite myself to that. Um, yeah, and I'm coming to <laughs> yeah, Italy. Absolutely. So, so you guys, because you guys just moved around so much as a family, which I remember being like, I. I was always so scared to have kids because I felt like my life would stop and I feel like I would always watch you guys just like continue on living life and bringing your kids along, which I just admired so much. So after you got married, where was your guys' next, like where did you place roots or were you just traveling? We never even thought about roots. I feel like we're both very Mm free-spirited, like very free-spirited. Um... So if anything, the idea of roots kind of like freak us out. We're like, nothing is forever. Yeah. Like, yeah. let's. Um, so we were just traveling and like dancing around the world, like just kind of doing our thing. And also just knowing, again, going back to that, like, we're not going to do this forever mindset. Like when you have a free hotel in like Bora Bora, like yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah. So And like fully knowing this is not normal and I'm one day not going to be able to do that. So I think we were just in the mindset of like, let's just take advantage of all these opportunities and just have so much fun. And it was so much fun. Yeah. When did you move or when what made you decide to move to New York City? Because that is like one of my favorite Ambi eras. And I remember so Rosie fun. just being so teeny tiny in her little like New York City outfits and Chauncey just like and you guys were in this tiny little apartment. It was just so cozy. It was so cozy. It was I think a 500 square foot apartment our first one. Not it being the size of the studio. Yeah it was really small. Um uh, it was so fun though like we just one day were like let's move to New York and again we're very free spirited so it doesn't take a lot of convincing for us mm-hmm. and we were like yeah let's do it so like next thing we know we were moving to New York and it was just like the funnest thing ever like I'm so glad we did it because looking back I'm like I don't think we could go do that now with four kids mm-hmm. I don't think I'm a New York mom it's like a very it's hard to be a New York mom yeah I don't know, like, you have to be really tough, and I don't think I'm tough enough, so I'm so glad we did it then and had that experience. Like, yeah. it, it's priceless, yeah. When did you, because Barefoot Blonde was the first business you started, is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah, while we were in New York. That was in New York, and were you just like, well, because obviously your hair tutorials were iconic, and I remember you using clip and extensions for, like, braids and stuff. What popped the idea of Barefoot Blonde? into your head I always wanted to own my own businesses and same with David his family is basically all entrepreneurs and same with mine like me and all my siblings are my dad was I feel like I've just never really known anything else so that's sort of just how my mind works and so I loved hair like the minute I went to hair school was like this is just my thing like I'd never felt that feeling before of like you found your passion Mm -hmm. So hair extensions for me was just so fun because I love to do editorials like look at Vogue or whatever and they always had big exaggerated braids and big fluffy like everything was just big and so with hair extensions I could recreate that Um, so it was just fun and felt artistic I guess and yeah I guess hair extensions we always knew we wanted to do hair care but that just felt like too big to take on at the moment Mm -hmm. and hair extensions felt more doable Mm -hmm. so yeah I I can't even remember it's crazy I literally can't remember like how we started it we would just lay in bed and like google things and like one day before I knew it we were launching it but we worked on it for a couple years before we launched it and I remember well first of all that was the first hair extension company I ever purchased anything from oh my god I was pregnant with Sadie and I got like the ombre clip and extensions because I had like ombre hair at that time 
I took Ziggy's one year photos and I'll have to show them to you. They're so cute. They're still the best and I love them. And we were the first to do fill ins and are up. All the other hair extension mm-hmm. companies followed suit, but we were the first. Yeah, you were the OG. So, you know. When, because I remember you had talked to me about this when we were hanging out. I don't even remember when, but you had told me that. Up until recently, all the money you earned from Barefoot Blonde, you just put back in. Yeah. So you were just supporting the family through social media content. Mm-hmm. Dang. When, what about the idea of day? When was that like, okay, we can do this? Well, when we moved to Arizona is when growing up, I was like, Arizona's not cute. Like, it's <laughs> not pretty why don't we have the ocean? Well, especially after traveling like, the world. You're like, what is Arizona? Yeah, like I just didn't think it was pretty, I guess. But then you move back as an adult and you're like, this is stunning. It's so peaceful. Mm-hmm. It's so inspiring. And like all of a sudden it felt like a whole new world. And I just felt so overwhelmingly inspired that I think that's when I was like, this is the story for my hair care line. Like there's all these beautiful botanicals. There's so many amazing ingredients. Like the color palette is just so beautiful. So I started to just story tell. I always start with the storytelling. I feel like the rest kind of can go into place from there. So I kind of just started all of that. Um, And we just work slowly but surely. We're just like baby steps. Don't overwhelm yourself. So, I mean, it, again, took us two years to launch day. Um, Also, just because we were self-funding it. And that's... Which is huge. Yeah. And, like, it's a lot to start a business. So you have to be really smart about it. Um, Yeah. So it just took time. It's... It's funny because I remember when you launched it and I bought it and I was like, hands down, this is the best hair products I've ever used in my life. Thank I'm not just you. saying that because you're my friend and I love you, but it is They're so, so good. good. I love them. And I, I've never switched. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, your hair adapts to different products. I've never switched. Like yeah, I've used it like since like Scotty we... right here knows all the hair products I use because we travel together all the time. It's only day. It's I day. love it. Even I told you last night, David uses it in his beard. Oh my god! He comes down. Scotty was here, and he's like, in the kitchen. He's like, smell my beard. He literally does this, and he goes, "I use the Blue Day conditioner till Stop Amber." Stop right now! It's so no, cute. it's like the best thing ever because me and David, when we were starting it, we were like, our goal is for one day people who use Day to not even know who I am. Like, you eventually want your brand to be bigger than you, like yeah. much bigger than you. Yeah. And our goal, like we wanted to build a beautiful business, not to make money right away, but like a beautiful business that could be here like 20 years from now. And like, and I feel like going into it like that, you kind of think of things differently and also knowing like I still don't pay myself from day. And even that, I feel like you treat it differently. You treat it differently when you're self-funding it. It's like your money or your family's money that you're putting into it. So Yeah, it, like, really does feel, like, I know it's so overused and cliche that people say their company feels like their baby, but, like, it does just feel so personal, because it's... That's your baby. It's so, it is so personal. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I remember before I knew you on a personal level, like, a year and a half ago when Dave and I were in Paris, and I told you this story, when we walked into Sephora and I saw a huge day set up in Paris, in Sephora, and I looked at David and I was like, holy shit. I was like, that's Amber's brand. I was like, this bitch made it. It's so crazy. so cool. And even with the Sephora women who work there, um, I was just talking to one of them because she was the very first person I talked to. And I didn't even have a name for the brand. I was just like, I really have this idea. And it was literally just an idea. And so we were just like thinking back to how it was just this idea that I pitched to them and now it's this big thing. So Sephora also feels like they've kind of been a part of the ride, you know, seeing it from its infancy to now. Um, People do get confused though. Sephora doesn't own any of the company. They're just a retailer we sell to, Um, but they're an amazing partner. So yeah. And I love all the play-ons you've done with the name day. Where did day come, like the name day come from? 
Well, it initially came from I was having friends, family, anyone who would try our samples. I was having them try our shampoo. And our signature shampoo leaves your hair very bright and clean and fresh and bouncy. And so people kept saying, I feel like I can go an extra day in between washes. And I was like, wait, I kind of love that idea. And like that just got my wheels spinning. So then I loved the idea of day just being a part of women's day and their routines. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that lend itself to a lot of great storytelling. And day stands for dawn, afternoon, evening. So all the times of day. So it kind of just all came together so beautifully so and I just love like every time I order the little like affirmation cards and the little like just um words on the boxes the first of all and any bougie bitch like myself loves this but they're so aesthetically pleasing in my shower of course they're just gorgeous I'm pretty sure like it's so funny because Rosie my daughter who's almost eight she we were trick-or-treating last night and she was dressed as a gothic a spider princess. Why does that not surprise me? She's such an icon. She's so cool. And then she, I handed her this linen orange bag and she was like to put her candy in. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh my gosh, I feel like I just need a black one. Like, and she was like visibly like stressed that like it just wasn't fitting her aesthetic for the night. Didn't match the outfit. And I was like, I have never just understood you more. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I feel that so hard. Um, but yeah, aesthetic always. Well, she, Rosie is like, she's so mature and independent. She is. And it's funny because you can tell she likes her own identity and her style because remember when I was like, Rosie, I love your hair. It looks so cute, short. And she was like, it's looking a little too much like my mom. (laughs) And I died. I just busted up laughing. And I looked at her, I was like. Do you realize what an icon your mother is? Because I just chopped a foot off my hair to look like her. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she was like, this was my thing. She's she eventually so came cute. around to it, Did and she? we just cut Frankie's hair too. Oh, so really? now all three of us match. Stop. And she finally did come around to it. But yeah, for a little, she was like, wait, that was like my move. She's so funny. Yeah, she's <laughs> giving mini Amber for sure. Yes. Okay, I so you had mentioned a little bit earlier about how you guys aren't part of the church anymore. Mm-hmm. I know you've talked about this on other on another podcast recently, but can you give like a brief breakdown of kind of how that came about? Yeah, like, oh my gosh, it's such a trip, honestly. There's so many layers to it, but David and I both grew up Mormon our whole lives. Recently left, like not even, I think like six months ago, maybe, um, like officially left, where I think I had probably been out mentally for a while, but I just wanted to give him like space and not really talk about it or like make him feel pressured. Um, and then he finally, like on his own time, was like, yeah, I don't like believe anything Mm -hmm. you know you kind of reach that point where you're like wait what do I believe still you're like nothing okay Mm -hmm. um and I think for us it was very exciting actually like we had a drink and cheers and we were like really excited about it just because we both are very hands-on parents and love to be hands-on with the kids and so the idea of not using the crutch as our or sorry the church as our crutch for well the church does service and sometimes in your head you're like well I'm a part of the church like yeah the church does service but like am I actually doing enough myself like I don't know I think it can be a crutch honestly um at least it was for us and so we were really excited about you know being more active participants in our community and really figuring out all of that on our own for our family instead of just plugging and playing what the church kind of gives you and just figuring out our own traditions our own like instead of a prayer at the family table like how are we connecting and how are we you know just all of those little things that I think religion sort of is a framework for people um like figuring those things out ourselves yeah and it's I feel like it when you have kids it puts a lot of life 
choices into perspective of how you want to raise your kids. And David and I kind of talked about that on his episode because he grew up so legalistic. And it's like when you have your own kids, you kind of take a step back and you're like, okay, what do I want to raise them by? Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's no issue with anyone being a part of any sort of religion or church, but I also think it's really important to be in tune with yourself and just being a good person. And I feel like you and David have done such a great job with your kids in that and just like giving back and being good humans. And you're also very open. Like I know if your kids would ever want to go back to church or be a part of a religion, you would be more than willing to let them explore that. But like for me, I feel like when I had kids that put a lot into perspective of what I want them raised with yeah for sure I think it's just like being open-minded that literally no one is right like I'm not right people in religions aren't right like I mean it's all I don't want to say fake but it's like all just a comfort blanket and whatever comfort blanket is the coziest like great um but yeah like I do see how especially for people who maybe are lonelier don't have family as a support or whatever I I can see how religion would feel so nice like pe- people do need to feel love and if they don't feel loved by people around them I can see how the idea of Jesus or God or whoever loving them and that just always being there is so comforting mm-hmm. I think I just didn't need that but I do see that like my kids could one day feel that they need that so, yeah, I'm, like, open-minded to whatever. I don't know. Well, you, I, like, I mean, this era of Ambi, I'll say it over and over, but, like, your shift in confidence and talking about, like, masturbation, nudity, sex, I'm like, who is she? I'm living for it. I know. Like, it's kind of, not cringe, but, um... Like, it's very taboo, I guess, especially in Mormon culture. Yeah. Um, and I never wanted to come across, like, uh, like pick me or whatever, yeah. that kind of vibe. Like it's seeking. Yeah, yeah, it's more just I have so appreciated being around women who talked about those topics and especially as a Mormon girl growing up, I was like, oh, I've never even heard that. Like, Mm -hmm. it totally opened my mind so much. So I think there is so much power in women talking about these things because I'll be honest, when I got married, like, I knew going into sex that, like, I was supposed to enjoy it too. But I think even if we don't realize it, we go into it thinking it is about the man. And, like, it's funny how so many women, like, I'll talk to other women who have never orgasmed or anything, and I'm like, imagine if your husband never orgasmed, and, like, he were just, like, if the roles were reversed, you'd feel so bad for your husband. You would feel guilty, you would go above and beyond to make sure it happened, but women do not get the same treatment. No, And it's just kind of backwards. And I think for me, as I was deconstructing religion, I also just wanted to deconstruct, even as a married woman, do I subconsciously do things for the male gaze? Like, without even knowing, just because we've been trained to do that our entire lives. Mm -hmm. And like, how can I just get rid of all of those little things that are left in my brain Um, especially because I just want to be able to teach my girls how to never have those thoughts and underlying whatever tendencies. And yeah, so I think as a part of deconstructing that, I mean, I share everything. It's so hard for me to not share stuff. Like I always have to remind myself, you don't have to share everything. Not everyone needs to know every thought that pops into your little brain. Um, But yeah, so I think just because I felt such a difference in myself, like I felt a shift. I felt my sex life getting so much better, our relationship getting better, everything just getting better as I was doing these things. And I'm like, I feel like I just want to share. And like, you know, I think you it's natural to have that inclination. When did you, what changed for you to feel like a better shift in your sex life? I think it was just, the thought of like you see friends 
getting divorced and going through really hard things that in my mind I just wanted to be at the point where I am so content and happy with everything about me that I'm choosing to be with David. He is content and happy by himself. He's choosing to be with me. But like if one of us made a mistake, like we are going to be okay Mm -hmm. separately. And like I I feel like that sounds dramatic because it's not like I'm planning on that ever happening. But I do think it makes a relationship so much more powerful when you both know you could be totally fine. Like he could be a kick-ass dad and an awesome human without me. Yeah. He doesn't need me. But like we love each other so much so we want to be together. But I think it was sort more so coming from that perspective where I'm like I feel like I want to just have a healthy sex life individually and not feel like I need anyone to help me. Yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. And I love the, that feeling of independence. And in fact, that feeling of independence for me makes me want to give more to my partner and makes me want to love him more and like be friends with him more and all that. So, yeah, I think it came from that perspective, just like wanting to grow personally. I also think it's impossible to know what you like in the bedroom with a partner if you don't know what you like yourself. Totally. And that's why self-exploration is so important. Yeah, and for sure. we've talked about that before. Because, like, you just... Until you find what you enjoy, your partner isn't going to know. And you're not going to know how to, like, comfortably give yourself to your partner if you're like, well, what do I like? Yeah. Because when you got married, you were a virgin, right? Mm-hmm. Because you were born and raised LDS. Yeah. And that, like, Emily and I talked about that, too, on her episode because... She's like, it's really hard because you're, you feel guilty for so long that like sex is almost like a shameful thing, but you also don't have the experience before you're with your lifelong partner. So you're kind of like figuring it out together. I know. And it like, it does take time. Like it's weird. You go into it and you're like, oh, we're going to have sex and it's going to be just like in the movies and all this stuff and it's like it's just not at first especially for girls because yeah I mean yeah we have it way harder I know I love my pink toy oh yeah like like, how do people I like for the women that don't need that I'm like girl you enjoy that good for you but that's not me (laughs) well and I mean there's like multiple I mean this might be getting TMI but like aren't there like different kinds of orgasms you can have oh multiple and so like you can have two different kinds of orgasms at the same time absolutely and like that's ideal yeah um but anyway like I feel like as I talk about it people always think like I'm suggesting like go crazy in the bedroom and do all these wild positions and like I actually don't think that having the best sex life means having sex every single day or like trying all these crazy things I think it's like when you both and it's so cheesy and I don't care but when you both are like so connected Mm -hmm. that like it just feels like so much love and like I love that like I think that is like a true powerful healthy sex life and that's like what I'm looking to have yeah and I think I think that especially for women it's definitely more emotional there's obviously like we can like get down and dirty, but then there's like your more intimate sex. Yeah. But even so, if I'm like not feeling connected to my partner, I don't feel like being intimate with him. And I'll tell him that like if we had a hard day or whatever, I'm like, just give me a day of recovery. Cause like right now I just don't feel connected with you. Yeah. I'm not going to pretend in the bedroom with you. I don't feel like that's healthy. But when you are connected and your friends, like, like he's my best friend and that's, that's the best part of marriage in my opinion and I feel like the sex is so much better when you're intimately connected inside and outside the bedroom yes and when you're both confident enough to be able to say like I'm too tired like yeah can you do it yourself yeah it's been a long day with the <laughs> or kids. something yeah. like and neither of you are offended or whatever 100%. because then like it never is to the point where it feels like a quote-unquote chore like yes. I haven't had that feeling of like oh I have to like 
whatever yeah. in just so long because yeah. it's like I just don't do it if I don't want to. Oh yeah, and when like he was on swing shift, he was like, "Make sure you use your pink toy tonight," <laughs> because he's like off at midnight. I'm like, I'm snoozing for two hours by then. <laughs> yeah, thank you for yes, no, totally. Or like, I'll send him a picture and be like, "Am I doing this alone? Or are you coming I'm with dead. me?" Yeah, I'm like, like sending him a selfie. I literally <laughs> sent him. Um, um, a nudie today, and I was like, "This is my first nude with short hair." And he's like, "Oh my god, like, you have to give it. me a warning." He's <laughs> so funny. When did you, when did you feel confident to share, more like stuff more like that? Because I feel like you made a shift where you talked about masturbation and and finding what you like, and people had opinions about it, and w- what. What in your brain shifted that you were like, I'm going to share this publicly? I don't know. I just one day like felt the need to share it, I guess. And so I did. And like I I do get crap when I share it. Like, oh, you're this Mormon girl who now thinks she's all cool talking about sex or whatever. But like I do just honestly think it is important because I do have a lot of Mormon girls who follow me Mm -hmm. and like I don't think they should grow up to feel like they are because I remember just the feeling of feeling like dirty and like gross and that is just such a shitty feeling that girls just shouldn't have to feel so like in a way I'm I guess I'm seeing it for people who have sort of carried that into adulthood And want to get rid of it. Because I went through the process of getting rid of that. And like I've sort of also looked at my platform. It's helpful for me to try to find meaning in it all. Because some days I'm like why am I doing this? You know what I mean? But I think for me I feel like the more I heal myself. Then I can share with others. And they can do the same. And I think that is really powerful like I follow people who I feel like have helped heal me Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and that just I guess helps me find meaning in me also sharing meaningless things like cute outfits and traveling or whatever um I don't know I guess it just helps to give meaning in it all I guess and I do think it is helpful to hear like I wish I would have heard it so and I for every one negative comment you get I know you're helping thousands of women even if they're not commenting publicly or sending you dms I just know that they're getting that confidence and that's something that is huge and you should be really proud of that yeah well and I think a lot of women too like give crap because they're still looking at it from a male perspective yeah they're still looking at it like crap well what if my husband saw this or like what if and it's like no I'm posting this for like girls like Mm -hmm. what do you I'm like we're not posting for men at all Mm -hmm. and like you need to receive the content from a female perspective as well and stop like thinking from your husband or boyfriends or whatever's perspective yeah this is for girls only yes it's not for anyone else (laughs) so uh, last thing I want to touch on is the fact that you have four children and you own multiple businesses and are the main provider for your, the only provider for your family because David is a stay-at-home dad. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Honestly, I couldn't do it without David. Yeah, like, he's a rock star dad. Oh my gosh, like he's such a good dad and it gives me the freedom. Oh, finally, like I can just feel peace leaving the kids mm-hmm. and whatever. Um so that but also I just genuinely love my businesses and I love like I don't think I could do it all if it wasn't actually fun like at the end of the day after like a 12 hour shoot day or whatever like I want to just go lay in bed and work because it's like that's just what I want to do so I think it's just fun and like my sister-in-law was just telling me how she was telling my nephew who's on a mission he's on a Mormon mission Mm -hmm. and she was telling him like if nothing else this mission is going to teach you how to be miserable and then she was saying how powerful it is to know how to be miserable because that like successful people have endured miserable periods of time Mm -hmm. whether it's like starting a business and failing over and over and over and over again and like continuing on or whatever 
like you do have to it's not all fun like I enjoy it but there are some really miserable parts that like you just have to do and you just have to get through it and yeah I don't know it's just it pays off at the end and also because I've never looked at my influencer careers like my end all be all to me my businesses are yeah and so I treat them as such. I I don't treat them as like a quick money grab or anything like that. It's like I'm in this for the long haul, longevity, abundance, all of that. Yes. That's like well, what you're, I focus on. You're just such an involved mom and you just like let your kids explore and be wild and free and like have their independence. And I love that so much. What would be like your number one mom advice to parents? I honestly think just like we all can do less and like, like I would rather connect with them and like get on their level when I'm putting them to bed and like laugh at their poop jokes and like really like get on their level and go to bed with a messy house or do like a fun after school snack instead of, I don't know something else yeah like I I definitely choose fun always pretty much well, and you're you're very how do I say this simple which I think makes you such a great mom because like your after school snacks which are iconic by the way everyone loves them like I can just imagine coming home as a child to that and just feeling like my mom is so cool like this is like that would make their whole day but it's just a simple school snack yeah like you don't have to do these crazy extravagant things which I'm sure people will like see your trips and think that's the type of parent that you are but really you just you do keep it so simple and you guys are so good at not just balancing like the roles of mom and dad back and forth but you also focus on them very independently a lot because you have four kids like that's a lot that's double the amount of parents that they have And you guys have done such a great job at balancing that. Yeah. I mean, I definitely always go into every week reminding myself that like that they are my priority. So like if push comes to shove, like if I have to cancel a call or whatever, like I don't care. Like they are my priority. Mm -hmm. So I remind myself of that every single week. But then also I just try to find as many things that can combine interests. Whoops. Um, that can combine interests like an example of this on Monday we do family night Mm -hmm. and for family night I had the kids we've recently had just a lot of death in the family and like a lot of unfortunate things happen so I was like we're just gonna talk about rage like full-on rage and we're gonna break glass stuff and we're gonna like make something with the broken glass after and like to me that combines my creativity Atticus will love doing that because mm-hmm. just love stuff like that. And Rosie will love the creative side. Frankie will think it's hilarious. Like I love like going through activities like that. And I'm like, check, check, check. Like everyone will enjoy this. We can all connect together. It also teaches them a lesson about anger. We talked about like how to deal with anger, how to make something beautiful out of it, blah, 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 whatever. Um, So I try to be very intentional. I plan a lot of things. I'll make printables. I try to just be very hands-on. And even if I only have the time, like, from when they get home from their activities to bedtime, and that's the only time I get with them, like, I'm going to make it, like, super fun. Like, we're going to turn on music. We're going to dance. We're going to have a special dinner. You even made my kids summer bingo cards. And they loved them. Like, she was so cute. She gave Ziggy one, and it was, like, looking at the stars at night or learning to tie my shoes or, like, so many different activities. And then you made the one for Stevie, and I was dying because it was, like, pissed my mom (laughs) off. Um, I love her. I don't even remember what you said, but it was just so funny. And I was, like, this is why you're my biggest mom in Spo because you, like, my mind doesn't think that creatively. And I love that you, like, the rage idea. Like, what an amazing thing. And they'll remember that forever. It was so fun. Like, that's so fun. And 
when I'm in a mom rut, I'm just going to text you. Oh my gosh, you're so nice. Because well, that's so like what I do. Is. I think it's like so nice to have friends of all ages for that reason. Yeah. Like I call on my older mom friends for advice all the time. And like one of them is like, I think one of my biggest inspirations and it's because like I remember being little and watching her friends come over and they'd go lay out in the backyard in bikinis and listen to music and like she just did like fun stuff but was also just such a loving fun caring mom Mm -hmm. and I remember just being like wow that's like so cool like you can just like have fun with your kids like you can just enjoy them and it doesn't have to be this thing that's like such a chore I guess so I try to just always have fun with them and I also think you don't have to lose your independence in the person that you are because like you said you can incorporate that with your kids because I I tell people all the time I'm like I'm growing with them like the person I was that I gave birth to when I gave birth to Ziggy five years ago I'm not that same person anymore and I feel so privileged that we've grown up together I know and like, it's so that's special such a beautiful thing and that's what all four of your kids get to experience and now you guys get to do all these fun things together and it's just so fun yeah like even with that like our rage night we had we were talking about like all of our triggers for like when we get mad or like things that we might do when we're like mad like I know exactly what each of my kids does and I was like what do I do and I get like mad and I'm about to erupt like a volcano and they were like knew exactly what I do so we're like okay we're just like all gonna work on these things together but yeah it's like you just as a family can continuously grow and like they can see that growth and like it can be talked about and like yeah you know I think it's really cool well I just have to say over and over you inspire me as a woman a business owner a mom a wife I think you're like the jack of all trades same girl and you're kicking ass thank you and you get better and better thank you and I'm obsessed with you same thank you for being on here. I'm so proud of us oh I love you <laughs> cheers cheers we didn't drink Yay. one sip because we were just girl talking I know but I love you and thank you for being I here. love you thank you for having me cheers guys <laughs>